This film study video is going to be another attempt by me to uh, reveal a layer to Ben Johnson's offense with the Detroit Lions from 2022. Sometimes they're very small layers. In this case, I think it is. This is going to be a focus on a fullback counter step when the Lions bring in a fullback. I think Jason Cabinda is his name from Penn State. Been in the league four or five years. Only had one catch last year. I don't think had a single uh, rushing attempt. I'm going to show a couple of plays here and let some commentary run. What I like about this is the intricacy of the timing. I'm going to let this play roll through at least two or three times. The fullback basically steps away from the point of attack initially. And whether it's a zone or a gap scheme, what he's trying to, trying to do is give the quarterback the midline. So the midline is basically this line that on our screen is neither horizontal nor vertical, but from an offensive standpoint is vertical. So going from where the ball is snapped, extending in the direction of the offense's intention or where they're facing, and then back behind them. The midline basically crosses through the midpoint of the center's body and the midpoint of the quarterback's body, typically if he's under center. The fullback, in this case, on this particular concept, is stepping off the midline to give the quarterback the midline, and then veering back, he ends up picking up a frontside inside linebacker. I, a couple of things I like about this play, I'm going to come back to it and break it down a little bit more in detail, is it's basically like counter. Uh, ben Johnson and the Lions, they integrate zone and gap schemes with it. I like that they're utilizing uh, specific personnel to do this little counter step. So what I mean is they're using a the fullback, Cabinda, or in some cases, uh, a tight end. The, the tight ends appear to be cross-trained to do this, and you'll see a little bit of film of them um, doing that a little bit later in the video. But this is a zone scheme. Basically, it's zone, and it looks like it should be, to me, it looks like it should be split zone, where the offense, the O-line is just all running you know, zone to the left. And then Cabinda is going to step off the midline and then come back to pick up the D-end. But what happens is, a uh, D tackle tries to cross the face of Sewell, the right tackle. So Sewell picks him up or tries to pick him up, and then the fullback ends up blocking him. So it ends up working out kind of weird, almost looks like they're kicking out a D tackle. I don't think that's the design of it. Here's the D tackle I'm talking about. Looks like he's on up in a two or maybe a two eye, so head up on the guard. So as they're working this way, the O line is working to their left. I think Sewell was trying to take him over. Well, as Sewell tries to take him over, this guy's running a predetermined stunt and stunting in the opposite direction. I wish I had two different colors to use so you could maybe see that a little better, so forgive me for that. He's stunting in the opposite direction, so Sewell, he crosses Sewell's face. Sewell is trying to take him over. Basically, the D-tackle is doing Sewell's job for him, but Sewell didn't know it was coming. Fullback ends up kicking him out. Huge hole on a zone scheme that you know didn't necessarily work out the way that it was intended. I love also that this fits with the under center play action game that Jarrett Goff is really good at. Additionally, Ben Johnson has the ability and does so often to use a compressed formation to really pack the defense in, like this first play that you saw against the New York Giants, to really pack the defense in as they're trying to load up and stop the run. And to me, another thing that it does is it allows a seldom used player to have a specific role. In this case, Cabinda, the fullback, or uh, a tight end. And having the tight ends cross-trained on this technique, it to me is just genius. And it's just what modern football is nowadays. Most teams don't utilize a fullback a ton. I like that Ben Johnson does this with a fullback and then with tight ends as well. I'm not too sure how many times he actually runs the ball with the tight ends back there, but you know, as I get more film in 2023, I'll be able to have a better idea of that. Okay, so the more typical usage of a fullback, full flow, that's what I just drew up there, meaning fullback, tailback going in the same direction immediately off the snap. This is zone lead left. Big gain here against the Bears. Full flow. Fullback, tailback, same direction off the step, snap. No counter step, no trickery or deception at all. Maybe you get a slight counter step on something like this um, from a tailback, but in this case, you just got a little bit of a bucket step bucket step to get some momentum, come downhill, follow the fullback. Most of, oftentimes, you see fullbacks that are really good at this stuff, you know, reading it for the tailback, and the tailback is just following him. In this case, a huge hole opens up. There's really no decision to make. That's your more typical use of a fullback, right? Full flow, downhill, coming right at you. Or the opposite would be, and I'm going to draw up one player wrong here, would be fullback coming here to the opposite side, tailback maybe counterstepping, coming back to the other direction. In order to make that successful, typically you've got to pull like a guard, 
to kick out and then a tackle to wrap. That's not exactly the path they would take. I just drew it so the two lines didn't overlap too much because I'm using the same color. So your typical counter would involve fullback counter stepping, or excuse me, fullback going opposite and the guard and tackle from the backside pulling and kicking out. Let's get back to the first play. It's a gap scheme, I guess you'd call it. We used to call it reverse power, whatever you want to call it. Fullback is counter stepping, getting off the midline. Left guard is kicking out. I think he's kicking out Jihad Ward. He's pulling and kicking out. And then this fullback is stepping like I drew it up earlier. And then working up to, I think, the front side inside linebacker number 11. Or maybe it's 41, but I think it's 11. You can see what it does to Jalon Smith immediately. He doesn't see the guard pull at all. I mean, here's the guard pulling. He doesn't see that at all. For you know, for whatever he's keying, he might just be keying fullback. He stepped opposite with the fullback's initial step. Tries to climb back over the top, loses the football for a moment. You see a nice job of the other inside linebacker getting to the line of scrimmage, trying to play it back to Smith. This isn't a Jalen Smith criticism video. I mean, it's it's difficult to do these things to read O lineman and to and fullback. They get thousands of reps to do it during the season, uh, but in this case, it happens to be a play that he would obviously like to have back. We used to call it high beams and low beams, coaching inside linebackers, meaning you got to have your high beams on running back, low beams on the O lineman, or you know, depending on situation, we would switch that and communicate that with the kids uh, a pre snap. What's brilliant for me, from a Lions perspective, and I've already mentioned this before, is that they can run a zone or a gap scheme and interchange this anytime they want to. You, you don't see it a ton, all right? At, at least from a full, you see full counter with the fullback going opposite. But again, in the NFL, there's not a ton of teams that are using a fullback that often. So this is seldom seen from the standpoint of a fullback being on the field anyway. And then I think it's a seldom seen technique when you combine, when you add the layer of difficulty with a zone or a gap scheme on top of it, the O-line could step in any direction and the play could go anywhere. It's really unpredictable if you ask me. Ben Johnson has the ability. Uh, no, actually, I think I should say he has the intention to give the inside linebackers no true key, meaning there's multiple guys who can take you to the point of attack. And on every, any given play, the Lions and our coaching staff can control that. And and clearly the inside linebackers don't know that pre-snap. They don't know whether it's run or pass in, in the first place. But they don't know if it's going to be a zone scheme, a gap scheme. It makes it really difficult, if you ask me, probably to prepare for them. Okay, so another element that I think they throw into this, if you can put players, uh, second-level players, in as much conflict as possible, most of the time those are inside linebackers. It can put them a step behind on full-flow run plays, like I think the third play I showed you that I called, I think I called it zone lead. And now here you've got a play action. I would call it his power pass. Fullback looking like he's going to kick out the D-end, slipping inside to run out into the flats. Inside linebacker number 44, maybe you want to call him outside linebacker number 43, whatever. Uh, but in any case, Will linebacker. He ends up being a little bit late. He's also got a tight end running across his face. But it ends up being a nice conversion on a second and two, second and three. Only catch of the year, I think, for Cabinda. To me, that indecision that Ben Johnson creates in, in the inside linebackers, in, in the DN and edge players, it's a foundational element of his offense, in my opinion. Other people may say it's... It's, it doesn't have that much value. I think it's a foundational element because, and, and look, this counter step that's not used on this play, but mind you, is just a piece of that deception. It's not the whole pie. But in my opinion, it's just brilliant design and just another example of, of how difficult it is to deal with this line's offense and all the variables that they can throw at you. Is Jason Cabinda one of their you know, top four or five or six offensive players? No. But they, they have... A guy who can execute multiple blocking schemes, playing fullback. He can catch the ball out in the flats. They tr cross train the tight ends to do it. They just drafted a pretty good tight end in the in the second round in Laporta. I think it's Laporta. There's a lot of variables, and the Lions are in control of all of them. I think they're going to shock people this year. I really do. <clears throat> um, they can control also whether it's run pass, right? And which of those variables actually matter? So we're going to let this this flow through. It's a, it's a long completion to Iman Ross St. Brown, one of my favorite players you know, to watch film of. I, I almost feel guilty watching so much film of him because I just enjoy everything that he does. Watch this linebacker right here. Try to watch him in the fullback. I guess I'll, I'll restart the play so you guys can see it. I hope this doesn't 
make the screen or make the video resolution mess up a little bit. But you can see that linebacker's totally biting on that fake. Well, why? Well, 45, the fullback, Cabinda's doing a great job of making it look like run. But who's not? These old linemen? I mean, you're telling me that inside linebackers at the NFL level are always reading guards? And they're not. he's not seeing that? That's a clear pass set. My point is... There is, for me, video evidence that inside linebackers are looking at the fullback when Ben Johnson puts him on the field. I think that's why he does it. And then utilizes all the counter step, the full flow step, the, the power, you know, power run game or kick concept, basically. And then the power pass that I showed you complete out in the right flash. He uses all of those to give those guys too much to deal with. And in this case, inside linebacker happens to be wrong. It's not the reason why the ball was completed to Iman Ross St. Brown. It's great timing by um, Jarrett Goff. Great route by Amon Ross St. Brown. You get an end zone angle view of it. So we're talking about the fullback, Cabinda, coming here. Linebacker filling now, thinking it's run. And then the pass sets that I think you're getting from the left guard and the left tackle that he doesn't see because I think he's looking at the linebacker. I think that's why he's standing at the angle he's standing at. And that may be some language that most people don't use, but if you've ever had to coach an inside linebacker who was, you know, 5'9", and uh, why do you think most inside linebackers in the NFL are like six two, six three? Because they want to be they want him to be able to see over the top of people. I think he's standing at this angle just so he can see the fullback, and that's why his feet aren't here, left foot, and here, right foot. Because then he had too many people, too many bodies in the way to be able to see the fullback. But that's just a theory that I have just because in at the high school and youth level, we've sometimes had to play smaller kids there and had to work on uh, getting them set up at an angle where they could see a guard and see a fullback in the same field of view. Another thing to mention, and I don't think I'm going to show this on any successful plays, I've talked about it twice already, is that Ben Johnson uses tight ends to do this as well. Now this happens to be what I would call uh, jumbo 12 personnel, meaning you've got a eligible offensive lineman, and then you've got a tight end in at fullback. So we would say jumbo to designate there's a sixth offensive lineman. So somebody, some people make what we call it 21 personnel. It's a 21 personnel formation. It's not a 21 personnel grouping, as you see in interception. I think it's a zone blitz, three deep, three under by the Packers and Goff. It looked like maybe briefly looked out into the flats. He gets this... Um, he gets a lot of criticism from what I've read of being a check down quarterback. And in this case, he probably should have thrown the check down. But we're focusing on this right here, the, the tight end being cross-trained, do the same thing the fullback does. I would be interested to see what the percentage is of times that he runs the ball or passes the ball when he's got a tight end and a fullback alignment. If you're interested in that type of thing, I'll try to find that based on the film I have. I think I have six games uh, totally broke down in my database of the lines from last year. I'd like to get a couple more before uh, the season starts. We'll let it run through one more time. We'll talk about golf for a second. Another thing I like about this in, in terms of the personnel they have on the field now is you've got a tight end and a sixth offensive lineman that are here to help in pass pro. It puts Jarrett Goff in a position to succeed, not always having a fullback on the field. In this case, happens to be a tight end. To me, this definitely looked like I saw the helmet look over here and we should have gone to Jamal Williams out in the flats. But sometimes when you have three deep, three under, this over concept, I call it deep over, Yankee, whatever. I'm in Ross St. Brown running that and then the number one receiver running this and trying to, trying to basically, the number one receiver is trying to basically hold this corner as long as he can and then throw this underneath Throw this over underneath him. Jair Alexander, I think it's Jair Alexander, ends up jumping it. <clears throat> I think it's a situation where he should have thrown the check down. I guess there's people who think that he does that too often. In this case, you know, quite obviously it looks like he should have. Look, this video was my attempt to show a specific element to Ben Johnson's offense on film and then let you as a viewer, I'm, I'm assuming if you've listened this long, you're Lions fans. First of all, thank you. But um, let you foresee it or maybe predict it. During games this season, even in the preseason, if you see the eye backfield set up, check the fullback out. Watch the fullback because I believe that's what some of the inside linebackers are watching. I showed you the inside linebacker for the Bears, you know, stepping wrong, meaning he's going with the fullback, even though there's a pass set. Don't mean he's reading it wrong. He just happened to be reading the wrong key. And that goes back to my original point. Ben Johnson will give you so many different keys that there's really none of them is that ever going to be right. 
See the fullback stepped opposite of the intended flow. Jalen Smith is stepping here. He's the play side guy when you're the play side inside linebacker and you got a 245 pound fullback there, or maybe 255 in Cabinda's face case. Um, you're coached up. Get ready. You're on the train tracks if the fullback's coming to you. Uh, we might be, to be honest with you, wrong in some of our predictions when you get the fullback on the field in, in preseason, in a regular season. Uh, let me know if you look for those things, if you've watched the video this long. Johnson seems like a guy to me who self scouts as an offensive coordinator. And I hate guys like this, for real, from my own experience coaching high school. He seems like a guy who might go two or three weeks and not show this fullback counter step at all. And so you, you prepare for it, and then you don't see it at all. And then when you, when you get him two, three weeks later, you think, okay, he hasn't shown this in three weeks. Should I not prepare my kids for it? And then next thing you know, he uses it six times in one game. He seems like that kind of guy to me. And that's really my whole point is that this offense has a, has a lot of depth and has a lot of width. And the piece that I chose to focus on today, um, a little counter step by the fullback, seems very minuscule. Does it add 3% effectiveness to the offense? Does it add 13%? No, but probably some number less than 5 But anything that's additional in the NFL when you're facing high-level guys, I think is important. And, and I'm trying to reveal to you guys little bits and pieces or parts of the offense, uh, one at a time, I guess, as I become aware of them. Let me know if you guys appreciate the video, if you like the, the, the content, what I was focusing on. I do intend to get done with the O-line video. That's That request has been made a couple of times. I really do love the O-line for the Lions. I don't, I don't even know all of their names other than Sewell, to be honest with you. But I see a lot of toughness and a lot of tenacity in those guys, so I, I would like to get that done. I definitely would like to get a video done on David Montgomery because I can use NFL film for that. Jameer Gibbs is college film, and I don't put that on my channel. If you guys have any suggestions for other film study videos and you watch this long, first of all, like I said, thank you. And second of all, let me know in the comment section which you know player film studies or coach film studies you might like to you know check out. I do intend to get another one done on Aiden Hutchinson during training camp. In any case, if you guys enjoyed this video and enjoyed this commentary film study, please consider grabbing a link to this video and sharing it out on social media to help my, my video get more reach.